you, Chairman. But if there be any further injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, and bruise for bruise. It's from the Bible, from Exodus. We're talking about proportionality, but we know that that particular um, Bible quotation, if carried out, an eye for an eye, will leave the whole world blind. And I had the pleasure of going to see it firsthand, the West Bank. We didn't get to Gaza with Deputy Shatter and Deputy Higgins. Um, I too find the contribution uh, of both ambassadors depressing. Uh, the one question I would ask the Israeli ambassador to, a to answer is, are they using phosphorus shells? No, 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 you didn't answer that. I told you categorically that Israel does not use any weapon that is uh, illegal. Is, we do not use phosphorus uh, weapons. A certain uh, phosphorus material that is legally uh, uh, permitted that is being used, but not. Let me let me just uh, to make sure because I know this is a this is a, a, an important question. Read it to you carefully so you you know what the the, the answer is. Uh, so what you're saying is you are using legal phosphorus No, no, shells. no, no, that's not what I'm using, because uh, this question has been asked. Uh, no, I know the chairman asked it, but, and I heard the answer. Uh, let, 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 me, let, me, let me make, make it very clear. Yeah. Uh, let me repeat. The weapons that Israel is using is keeping with international law. Israel does not use phosphorus anti-personal munitions. However, certain smoke munitions used in the recent operation in Gaza do contain small amounts of phosphorus. They are directed against military targets and used for their design purpose of signaling and screening. This is the, the answer that the Israeli military uh, has given. So there are elements of phosphorus in the shells? Certain elements that are permitted for use by international and, and they, law and they are legal by and international. are used by NATO forces oh, in that Europe mean they're legal. that are used by, by the British oh. and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and don't single out Israel. No, I'm not you singling you out. I, you were exactly. asked the question by our chairman and you didn't give that succinct answer that you've given there. Um, and thank you for that. I too went to the West Bank, went to Sadrat um, and was um, there during the attack. Um, and, you know, having seen all the newspaper reports, we've got to say that the first casualty of war is most certainly the truth. And having been in the West Bank and seen Fatah and the, and the Palestinian Authority, I've got to say to the, the ambassador from uh, the Palestinian Authority that I know they were getting nowhere in their negotiations with the Israelis. And I think that was that the negotiations are particularly going nowhere because the main players like the U.S., Hamas obviously aren't at the table. Um, a lot of your own people are in prisons. The prisoners being a very important element in any peace process, as we know in Ireland. Um, plus, um, as was admitted to me by uh, many of the NGOs, the corruption of your own uh, Palestinian authority, the squandering of money, the, um, the use of money to further uh, your own interests, and in some cases, uh, <coughs> Uh, blatant corruption did nothing for you and did a lot to enhance Hamas in Gaza um, and led to your ultimate loss in the election. Uh, you did not serve your people well. Um, you lost credibility among your own people. Um, and, you know, now the Israelis have you between a rock and a hard place because you don't have the backing of your own people in one section of the Palestinian state and you're losing support in the West Bank. Um, I suppose that Isra Israelis' actions have to be put down to a large degree to an upcoming election because Benjamin Netanyahu is, as we all know, we thought he was a, a man from a bygone era, but he was making a lot of noise in the last 12 months and looked like, from what we were talking to members of the Knesset, it was an all but foregone uh, conclusion that he was going to come back to power. But Obviously, the attack on Gaza, amazingly enough, is being used as a, is part of the Israeli election. Unfortunately, there are people playing the consequences. There are war crimes on both sides, 
as I've spoken about the phosphorus shells and you know from my limited knowledge of uh, negotiations and peace negotiations there has to be a hurting stalemate on both sides that isn't in place all the players have to be willing to participate and as we know the US doesn't have um, the resources to participate at the moment the EU can't get its act together uh, the Arab world isn't particularly interested as we can see from the fact that the Egyptians aren't doing too much at their border with, um, with Gaza even in the three hour spell where they are allowed for humanitarian aid and of course Hamas have promised destruction of the state of Israel and um, Deputy Shatter spoke about the elephant in the room. Deputy Shatter, there are more elephants in the room than just one. Iran is one, of course, and I would welcome the Iranian ambassador, if we are going to have a reconvening of this meeting, that the Iranian ambassador would be brought back in. And I go back to the what limited ability we have to do anything at this moment in time. I suppose the EU have failed and failed dramatically. Um, in relation to our trade agreement with Israel, we have given preferential trade agreement to Israel and we have put a clause in in relation to human rights, but we have not defined it or even made any attempt to exercise it. Um, I would support Chris Andrews in his call for an identification on, um, or for produce from the illegal settlements in the West Bank to be identified and for those to be boycotted because when Ronald Reagan came into power in the 80s there was 30,000 illegal settlers in the West Bank and now there are over half a quarter of a million and that as we know in this country can lead to problems four centuries later um, but the EU of all is the one that can use its uh, monetary muscle um, to impose trade sanctions not only in relation to uh, Israel and its actions but in relation to Iran and its support for the um, unacceptable attacks on Israel itself. But I fear, Mr. Chairman, that the EU has been found wanting and will continue to be found wanting in this regard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. On a point of order there, uh, Mr. Chairman, the Ambassador was pointing out we didn't have an enemy, that we were fighting with the Atlantic Ocean, our near neighbour. <laughs> wasn't but, but, sorry, Chairman, Chairman who's, but, who's this? Sorry, sorry. Uh, who's that I man there? Who's let he? Him, let us have, Are we let, a new deputy? In let us move on to Dr. I just wanted to point out jury. it was yes, yeah. a stark. Dr. Uh, Jury, uh, error, please. Well, uh, I don't know. In fact, Senator, 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 Senator,